Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by with the haunting update, aka the season six reloaded update here in Warzone. It was incredibly surprising that in the patch itself, we didn't see any direct weapon changes or the addition of a new weapon for the first time in mid-season update history, right? Although, you may recall that last week, just prior to the MW3 beta, we did see a slight update go live that included a decent amount of weapon changes. And so with that today, while we are still waiting on more weapon changes to come, as Call of Duty has revealed in season now in a couple of weeks time, we're still gonna see some more weapon changes before the launch of MW3. I figured why not take the chance to break down the current top 10 best weapons in the game and then once we see some full-on weapon tuning and whatnot, potentially, you know, next week or the week after, we'll break down the general top 10 loadouts. So as we go through the weapons here today, if you enjoy the video, do me a favor, drop a like on it. It's always appreciated. And if you're new here, you want to guarantee you're up to date with everything going on in COD, news, updates, patch notes, meta breakdowns, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications. But yes, uh, if we're going over the top 10 weapons, we can't ignore the Lockwood 300 it's still in the meta. As much as I don't like this gun, it is broken and obnoxious. It's uh, not been nerfed enough yet. Uh, it can still one shot within seven meters. Thing is absolutely crazy with this dual trigger on there. It is just unstoppable in the close range meta. Of course, you gotta have good accuracy, but with how aim assist is in this game, that's pretty straightforward. Like this thing is just nuts still. I imagine that after some bundle sales have calmed down, they'll nerf this thing a little bit more. Really, the trigger is the problem here because it is just so good at making this weapon so incredibly strong. But obviously, we've got that on there. I've got the high stock mod for better mobility all around. The 7 milliwatt laser, snap your ADS and sprint to fire clutch here for using this thing up close. The 812 barrel for better range, extending that to that 7 meter range for that one shot knock is obviously huge. And then the series 9 choke here for the tighter pellet spread and the slightly better damage range on there as well. So definitely is niche for just that super close range range but this thing is so so busted still and when those patch notes from a week ago or so uh they actually ended up nerfing the mp5 a little bit but didn't touch the iso 45 so this thing easily clears in the top 10 right now it's been a problem for many seasons as we know pretty much since its introduction the iso 45 has been a menace up close Right now, it's still one of my top preferred choices. You gotta get past that iron sight, uh, you know, visibility in my opinion, or throw on an optic, but if you can get past the shake and whatnot, thing is an absolute beast. It's TTK is just broken everywhere. Up close, it's right there with the best of the best, and then over the mid range, it also just beats every other SMG too. So this thing's kind of the do-it-all sub. We got the 45 round drum on there, the sheer rear grip as always. Cheetah stock, which I love for the better sprint speed, strafe speed, ADS speed, doing all sorts of mobility boosts for us there. Seven milliwatt laser here as well. And then I go for the KT-85 as mentioned with that crazy shake that this gun does have, especially the further out you get, it's more noticeable. Having that on there will help minimize that with the control and make it a little bit easier to use overall so that's definitely still pretty clutch when it comes down to it but no denying the iso 45 is still a phenomenal choice for close range but honestly i've been enjoying the iso 9 millimeter a little bit more recently maybe just because it's a little more new i mean the guns still feel ridiculously similar this and the iso 45 are like one to one in a bunch of ways but this does have a bit more of a fresh feel to it the fire rate's a ton of fun this thing up close is also just a demon it's got crazy mobility and a really good uh close range ttk as well so very similar setup here in a lot of ways here we just have the 50 round drum instead i got the sheer rear grip for the better ads and sprint to fire as well the res 2 stock is basically the equivalent of the cheetah it's sprint speed strafe speed ads speed as well 7 milliwatt laser yet again. The spiral flash hider is also just straight up for better control. I don't think uh, the recoil on this is as obnoxious as on the ISO 45. It's still noticeable though, so that does help out there for sure. Just makes it a little bit more reliable and consistent. And yes, despite the fact that the MP5 was nerfed a little bit, it's still very good up close and still easily a top tier competitive choice right there next to the ISO 45 and the 9 mil and our other close range options. So this is still a great choice to be running as that nice secondary for a rifle, a sniper, an LMG, whatever the case may be and set up here really not changing all that much we got the 40 round mag on here if you want to jump up to 50 you could do so i like 40 just because the slightly faster reload is my main go-to reason there TCG 10 rear grip for the better control, but I go ahead and I tune for that inverse of better mobility. We got the mobile stock on here. Again, sprint speed, strafe speed, and ADS speed, seven milliwatt laser. And in this case, I go for the Falcon barrel. The recoil here is obviously super easy. So we can get even better movement out of using, uh, you know, this Falcon option here for the uh, general movement speed and ADS speed. So the mobility gets cranked up even more. Obviously very snappy, very fast, very aggressive. And I love that in all my close range options. 
Now, sticking on theme with the SMGs, these are dominating close range, obviously, outside of the Lockwood 300 and the Bass P. This thing's risen in rank so much recently. Keep in mind, we're not in any particular order here with the top 10 today, but the Bass P is really just been bumping up a ton in the uh, SMG category and in the close range meta. Its TTK is now super competitive. And what this has over all the other subs is its range. Its initial damage range is so much better. In the mid range, its TTK is so much better. So this thing's a lot more versatile than really every other sub while also still being very easy to use as well. So this setup is nice, snappy, and aggressive. You got your close range covered and it's ease of use has your mid range covered. 50 round drum, very basic, extended mag. Ruin flash, rear grip, better ADS and sprint to fire. The flash V4 stock, you'll never guess, is for better sprint speed, strafe speed, and ADS speed. Seven milliwatt laser as well here. And then I also go for the flash hider in this case once more for that better recoil steadiness. So SMGs all kind of built the same way right now because you're all focusing on the same basic pros that you want to get out of any given setup here. Uh, even though they all feel very different, they're all used in similar ways. So it's definitely a copy and paste scenario here for a lot of these. But then we stray away from the SMGs, the Geist rifle. This actually caught some slight nerfs recently about a week ago as well, but it's still, in my opinion, the best rifle rifle in the game and definitely one of the better long range options in the current meta which is kind of awkward because nothing's really doing crazy damage anymore but this thing is super low recoil so easy to use and that's mainly why i love it but also it's got that solid damage as well so it's a really really fun and fresh feeling rifle of course here we got the aimov v4 my go-to optic for all my mid to long range guns if there's a different optic that you prefer more always go for that instead 45 round extended mag it's the max here but that works totally fine with this fire rate ripper under barrel for the better stabilization and stability on there making this gun a bit more predictable or 490 basically gets rid of all the horizontal recoil so this thing is extremely predictable and so easy to use over range and then the bridle heavy barrel better range velocity and control that nice three and one combo better pizza thrown in there as well for the papa johns and it's just a go-to setup i mean it's so easy so straightforward anyone can pick up this thing and just fry with it another choice i love for long range right now is the sack and this thing has a great damage output but is also so easy to use as well extremely low recoil so you just got to hit your shots and with it being so easy to do so you're going to be able to fry obviously though it's an lmg so it's super heavy and super slow and the reload sucks so that's something you have to take into consideration for sure but to me the pros outweigh the cons of its mobility here i got the aimov v4 on here yet again and then i'm kind of all in on recoil control just to make this thing as laser beam-esque as possible step 40 rear grip straight up better control edge 47 under barrel better stabilization not not as much as uh, the Ripper would, but it's got a faster ADS than the Ripper, so I like that on there. Polar Fire S Suppressor is better velocity and range. You don't need a heavier suppressor here since it's just so easy as is. You can just get away with this. Also a slightly faster ADS. Then the Silver Series Barrel, again, better control, better velocity, better range, better pizza on here, that three-in-one combo. Just optimizing it for the mid to long range gunfights. Fantastic choice still. Now the wrap is still frying. This thing has been frying for several seasons now. It's relatively low recoil for as crazy as the TTK and the fire rate here is, which is still surprising to me to this day, but you master the feel of this thing and you're a set mid to long range this thing's gonna rip through everyone again the only drawback here is that mobility it's reload abysmal it's uh ads and sprint to fire abysmal but for long range you can get by with that just fine just plan your reloads accordingly right yet again we got aimov v4 tcg 10 rear grip is also just for better straight up control because the fire rate is so crazy i'm still rocking that 100 round mag up from 75 just so i don't have to reload nearly as often this does help out i uh, here and there i got the hound 9g under barrel for better steadiness gonna make this way easier to use overall again make that recoil pattern more predictable then the talon 5 suppressor is a heavier option here so it gives you a little bit of recoil control on top of added velocity and range once more just making that extra mid to long range damage boost that you get there with the range there uh the better velocity with the hit reg making that feel even more reliable and consistent and just overall lethal now the advancer this is another ar that is just feeling so good right now especially for like the mid range if you want to use this as sniper support but even for some long range too some 50 60 70 meter fights this thing's ttk is one of the best in class its fire rate and damage per mag are a little bit underwhelming in some cases but you just got to work around it really get a good feel for the weapon and you're gonna be good you're gonna be able to just obliterate everyone right again i like the aimov v4 here for all ranges basically you definitely want to run the 60 round mag there because that fire rate as i mentioned is pretty crazy so worrying about that reload when you don't need to be is uh is obviously never ideal you don't want to be mid fight and say okay i have to reload now and it gets you killed so 
60 allows you to take some stress off of that ripper on her barrel better stabilization yet again harbinger heavier suppressor better velocity control and range and then the 435 barrel better control better velocity here just making it a little bit easier to use a little bit more consistent and reliable as well so there is a bit of a learning curve with the advancer right now but for the most part you can pick up this thing get that recoil pattern down and it's going to feel really really nice and then lastly here i got the razorback similar to the advancer in a lot of ways except this is super easy to control and in fact with this specific build on there true game data's metagen says that this is the most predictable predictable and easy to use weapon in the game over long range pretty much because we are all focused on horizontal control attachments komodo heavy better horizontal control the specific proto under barrel better horizontal control and better stabilization on there those two combined give you a setup that makes it so that the recoil is basically straight vertical and you know exactly where this gun is going to kick every time you shoot it I also go for high velocity here might as well for the mid to long range make it feel a bit more consistent 60 round mag because the fire rate's still kind of crazy then amob v4 as always there no real changes there but really fun setup a super slept on gun in my opinion and it like i said is so easy to use that literally anyone can pick this thing up and absolutely fry with this so that being said those are the current top 10 weapons in the game and the best setups for them respectively hopefully we get some nice surprise weapon changes here soon like call of duty mentioned we can go through and break down a detailed top 10 best loadouts with primaries and secondaries that are adjusted post update there so stay tuned for that alongside everything else going on in cod make sure you are subscribed with those noties turned on and if you enjoyed the video do me a favor drop a like on it would be really appreciated but once again thank you so much for tuning in and until next time take it easy have an awesome rest of your day and i'll catch you later peace out